Um, okay, let's go. Because we have to keep, because my memory is fresh, right? Burt Kreischer's special, Razzle Dazzle. This is my review. <sighs> I, have to, I have to be honest and say full transparency. I only made it to about 45 minutes. I couldn't finish the whole one hour, five minutes. I think. No, actually it wasn't. I made it to 41 minutes. Okay. There, I made it to 41 minutes around there. As you can see, there's proof right there. 41 minutes, right? <sighs> okay. Let's start off with the good. Let's start off with the good. Let's start off with the good. Um, the good things I like about it. It was really well shot. The sound was amazing. Audio wise. Very well produced, clearly. I like some of the camera shots. Really nice. I like that they didn't do too many of the cringy crowd things of people like, you know, like cutting from different things. Um, I also like the fact that there was no like cringy, like walkthrough. Like he didn't do that cringy stuff that people do where they kind of pretend like they're fighters. Like Schultz with the flipping Bruce Buffer. There was no cringy him in a car or something. It was just straight into the comedy theater. It's just straight into the theater as he performed. I thought that was quite cool. And then I also, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. This is my honest opinion. I also didn't mind the shirt thing because usually he's always got a t-shirt that he takes off, but he's got a really funny way. It takes it off all in one swoop, whatever. But I didn't mind the button up t-shirt um, opening with the, with the diamonds all over it, right? Like the, the things. Um, and it popped off and then he kind of starts doing his special. Cool. But I quickly realized that I don't think I'm a fan of like storytelling uh, comedians because I guess it's kind of hard because you have to you have to kind of give it you have to kind of like them or give a fuck about their lifestyle for you to be impressed or for you to be engaged in their stories and because Bert essentially all of his stories revolve around his wife being dumb his daughters being dumb and him drinking a lot and having fun it's hard to really be invested in it you know what I mean like it's hard to get it and Maybe people on here will call me a bit of a cuck and stuff and say I'm being a, a, I don't know, a male feminist or something. But I've always really felt uneasy about all these comedians who are like really outwardly disrespecting their like partners all the time. Like this idea that they all hate their wives and their, you know, girlfriends and that their kids are a nuisance and they don't like to be at home and always want to be on the road. It's just very tasteless, I think. It kind of lacks class to be talking about your, you know, significant others and your family members like that. Or even painting out your extended family members to be like people that lack sense and that are dumb and all these civilians, they don't understand it. It just feels like a a little bit of a contempt for people nearest and dear, near near you who are kind of um who are kind of essential part of your being successful. Because if you're a comedian and you've got kids and stuff and you've got a partner at home them raising the children and you being able to be on road to be performing all the time is an integral part of you being successful also because you can fully concentrate on your show because you know back home he or she is handling business and looking after the kids and keeping them fed and whatnot and whatnot and making sure that they're flipping alive and whatnot i just find that kind of overly oh let's take the piss out of the partners that we have and they're, they're no good and they're, all this stuff i'm looking for a sec i just don't know i just find it so weird personally for me i just never really liked it so i was going into it with a bit of a bias because i've always been a little bit uneasy about that especially when it comes to bert because his kids are like teenagers um and it feels like maybe they've had a conversation anyway he's told spoke to his kids like you know what i'm gonna involve you with my shows but I feel like they kind of have no choice. Like if they want, if they want to like go to private school, <laughs> if they want to go to better universities, basically giving them no choice. Like if you want all this life, if you want to have a Mercedes when you're 18, you have to allow me to talk about your periods. You have to let me talk about the, you know, I don't know, God forbid when they lose their virginity or something like, it's just weird to me personally. Um, and the fact that he makes his wife sound like an absolute dumb, dumb, when if you actually listen to the podcast and hear her speak when she comes on, Leanne Kreischer is like super sharp, super like aware, super on it. Um, it makes you actually question like how the fuck Bert even got her because she seems to be a really decent um, kind of even killed woman. Like how does she end up with this like functioning alcoholic? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's where I started from. But then the jokes, 
bruh, the jokes, bruh. I felt like the biggest applause breaks he got in that special were like him saying he's the machine or like in a bit, he's got a bit that someone says in the crowd, he's the machine. And then another break that he got that was really, that kind of got a lot of response was him mentioning Tom Segura's name. I'm not, I don't like this trend. I don't like this trend of comedians within that JRE extended universe name dropping their other podcast comedian friends to get easy laughs and cheers. I feel that's extremely hacky. My good friend Joe Rogan, I was on this guy's podcast. You might know him. His name's Joe Rogan. One of my best friends, um, Tom, he can't really jump and he did that whole hand breaking thing. I was like, yuck, 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 yuck. Um, but to be honest, that might be the best joke. I think that is like it was like a it's like a it's like a throwaway line, but he basically mentions how um Tom can't do simple things like jump. If he does that and he breaks his arm or something along those kind of lines. And I thought that was actually the best one and legitimately made me laugh. But I didn't laugh once, like properly, like from the belly for those entire forty minutes. I had a smile on my face because he was telling, I don't know, stories that seemed a bit gross but then ended up to be quite charming at the end but it just it felt uneasy and <laughs> this is something also I have to mention as well just to kind of put it at the end of here there's something kind of repulsive about seeing a man that looks like Burt Kreischer on stage without no top on I'm sorry it just is it's just what it is it's impossible to focus on it like it's really hard to focus on the comedy when you're like you're seeing the crevice of his belly like hanging over his belt like you know and you're thinking is is the belly hard is it soft you think does it smell like tito's does it smell like heineken like what's up with you know i mean like that's what you're thinking of straight away like the chain around his neck it's like it's getting swallowed by all these neck fat rolls. You can't even see the chain anymore too much. Like, it's just really difficult to focus on the comedy when he's standing there on stage with no top on. It's so bizarre. Like, especially at his big age, like, surely at some point, surely at some point, surely at some point, there has to come a point where he just kind of gives it up. There has to come a point where he gives up the t-shirt thing because it's so weird. Like, and... <sighs> I know it's an easy applause thing to get and it's hard to maybe take it away, especially if it's doing well for you. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I find it hard to focus. And then to end it review wise, I think these guys are all without exception. Having watched all their podcasts without exception, they're all extremely funny on pods, but I feel like they lack that sparkle on stage. And I was thinking to myself this, right? I was thinking to myself this. Is it because they're overexposed? Is it because Burt Kreischer podcasts like what? Three to four times a week, um, plus whatever guest shows that he's on, always on social media. So if you if you follow him, you're going to see a lot of content of his. If you like his podcast, you're going to listen to every episode. If you like him as a person, you might listen to him on guest shows. So you're getting a lot of Burt, a lot of these comedians in your ears on a daily basis. So I'm wondering if that affects your ability or my ability to laugh at them on stage because sometimes you hear you've heard the jokes before you've heard the premise of them said already on the pod i mean it's hard to kind of figure out is are they funny on podcasts only are they actually funny on stage but you're kind of getting you know you're kind of um spoiled and you kind of get inundated with all the i don't know it's just hard to take because someone like a fear of one's a good example fear of one i feel like is one of the legit funniest people within that jerry extended universe like actually like legit funny but his stand-up specials aren't as good as him being on podcast at all i don't think he's got one stand-up special that's as good as his appearance on podcast he's got this one clip that he puts up I think it's a clip of him the last time he did drugs or the last time he kind of went crazy when I think he left um, Joe Diaz's podcast. I think he did Mushrooms or he did something and he went straight there, straight from Joe Diaz's place to doing a comedy set and it might be one of the best ones ever done like footage-wise, like, you know, as a clip. But all these specials don't come close to the little skits he's got with Bert, with Brendan on The King and the Sting, the early appearances on The Fire and the Kid, the early appearances of himself on his own show, the appearances on Rogan's show. Like, he's way funnier on podcasts than ever on stage. And I wonder 
if it's because they just do the podcasting way more than they do actual stand-up like you know in terms of time spent honing that kind of craft of being funny on those several platforms i don't know but this Burt Crash of Azure Dazzle special was so bad, like ridiculously bad. Like it made me question, it made me think, you know what? I, it, watching this Burt Crash special made me understand why someone like Brendan has so much self-confidence in it, has so much self-confidence, even though it's delusional, in his stand-up. Because if you're watching that, how far really is Brendan from Burt Crash? Like, let's be real. I know that Brendan isn't that funny and there's not many jokes, but how lo- how far away really is he? If he actually would sit down and write and review his content and maybe hire writers and actually go on stage and perform in different places and do open mics, Brendan could reach Burt Crash's level of funny, in my opinion. He's not that far away. He's not. It's not that crazy. It's not like Burt is like, you know, on Mount Rushmore of comedians or anything. Like, it was just like, Jesus Christos. But it may be as well. It's it's, it's one of those, into it's one of those um, it's one of those things that's incredibly subjective, in one way too. Like what I find funny, maybe some of you guys won't find funny, and vice versa. So maybe stand up is very hard to judge in that way of review, because you have to kind of be into that person, into their kind of humor, to kind of laugh and get it. And if you don't get it, you just don't. And I think this is the example of it. Like. I just, I don't know, man. I just couldn't. I was just think, watching it thinking, this is terrible. It's well produced. It looks amazing. Um, there's clearly an effort gone into putting the jokes together. You can see they've been honed. There's tags all over the places. It's tight as hell. But in terms of actually making me laugh, zero. Like legit. I didn't laugh the entire 40 minutes that I watched it from the belly. Um, I had a couple of chuckles here and there, a couple of smiles. And the one joke that did make me laugh was a throwaway kind of hacky reference um, to, or low hanging fruit reference to Tom Segura. It was really weird. And for me personally, I have a real issue with the whole like painting your family as to be dumb type of routine thing. I just think it's a bit hacky. Also, it's a bit lame. It's obviously not true. Um, and it just feels a little bit crass in my opinion. I don't know. I just didn't like it all. I didn't like it in the slightest. And um, yeah, what can, I, what can I rate this as? Five out of 10? Maybe a five out of 10? Maybe five? Maybe. But would I recommend it? Probably not. Did it hurt every part of my body to review that? Probably yes. It took ages to get through it. Honestly, it was horrible. It was horrible. So um, yeah, Bert Kutcher's Razzle Dazzle gets a five and a half or five, not even five and a half, or five um, out of ten for me. Uh, just not for me in the slightest, honestly. I couldn't do it, not for me in the slightest. Great guy, never met him. Um, moving on from that one, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about this. Talking about specials, oh, is it, <laughs> what? Raichi Richie Raichi says 2.5. God damn, that low. Actually, what do you guys think? Is my five too high? 2.5 is... Holy shit. <laughs> okay. I feel the same way about how Schultz just does crowd work based on public races. It's lowest common denominator. It's comedy. It's too easy. Exactly, yeah. But making a promo, everything's too much. Shit. 2.5. Okay, cool. I think maybe I was being too generous. I said five. God damn. But special is a 33 on rope. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, let me actually, let me actually check that. What is it? Um, good point. Good point. Let's see what it is. Oh, is that right? <clears throat> Rot- let's see. Rotten Tomatoes. Let's see what the special. Let's see what it is. Rotten Tomatoes. Two point five with a handicap compared to other special. Jesus Christ! I want to. Hopefully, they got the audience score, not the critics, because the critic score is all usually rubbish because you know he, he did say some racy jokes and so maybe they didn't like it because of that um something about them being white or something his daughter's you know boyfriend or something let's see what they say here ah so the audience score yeah jesus christ the audience score is 54 percent. god damn son to be fair i think the um, the other special was better much better um secret time was it secret time he did i think it's secret time right Bert Kreischer. I, I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was much better. 
um, comedy specials. I think Street Got Time was way better than this. Way, way, way better than Razzle Dazzle. Razzle Dazzle was fucking terrible. Um, what did he do? Was it Special Street Got Time? I think it was Street Got Time, right? People are saying 4, 2.5, 3.5. Jesus Christos. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah. Am I right? See, yeah, see, look. Even the even the scores on IMBD um, reflect my estimation. Razzle Dazzle's got 6.8, which is not that high from 5. And Secret Time's got 7.3. And then the other one that people rate is obviously 7.6, is the machine one. And Big Boy got 7. So yeah, Razzle Dazzle is definitely the worst one so far recently that he's done. Jesus Christ, man. But yeah, I don't know, man. Not for me personally. Not for me in the slightest. Not for me in the slightest. 